फोर थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव नाउ गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ ऑर्थोपेडिक रिसर्च एंड एजुकेशन फाउंडेशन इंडिया टूडे वी हैव डॉक्टर आनंद किशोर पाल सर हु विल टीच एस अबाउट द प्रोस्थेटिक्स विच इज क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द क्लिनिकल एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एन बोथ एम एस एंड डी एन बी एज वेल एज डिप्लोमा सो सर इज वेल नोन एंड ही हैज टेकन सो मेनी क्लासेज फॉर ऑर्थोपेडिक रिसर्च एंड एजुकेशन फाउंडेशन सो Uh, he is uh, former hod of ipgmr kolkata so over to you sir please thank you janki uh, for your uh, nice introduction so without any de delay i can start uh, my topic is orthosis and prosthesis uh, basics and how to prescribe the orthosis basically suppose this is i am giving the one example so this sort of questions is sometimes it is uh, given in your uh, dnb oski a 55 years old man presented with inability to grieve for 6 months following a major elbow surgery so first question is identify the orthosis and the disease for which it is commonly used okay next one is the enumerate the primary and the secondary functional deficit okay describe the mechanism of action of this orthosis and lastly mention the function or utility of the rubber band attached here that is yellow arrow here so this is see the number is distributed over like this so this is a basically it's a sample questions i am not going to answer now so at the end of my uh, lecture i can uh, discuss okay so another uh, is for the ms uh, students this sort of uh, uh, mm, the, uh, the questions may be asked so identify the orthosis so for the uh, ms orthopedics course Uh, so the orthosis and prosthesis is uh, is is it is uh, examined in a separate table viva it is almost uh, 25 to 50 50 marks and uh, what are the items usually asked in the examination like first is identify the name and type of the orthosis like this uh, what are the parts of the orthosis next which indication in this orthosis is used next is what is the mechanism of action next what is this limitation and next is the advanced form suppose this is the this one this this one is a orthosis how to clear nomenclature it so these are the questions this is another orthosis so what is basic difference can you see that it is encompasses the foot ankle not the knee similarly this orthosis also encompasses that cr crosses the foot and ankle joints as also uh, the leg but not the knee but basic difference between these two see the junction between the leg and foot component here it is a leg and foot component is a 90 degree but as a leg and foot component is it is little bit 15 degree plantar flexion so that is the difference and then there is another difference on this on one this is also encompasses the foot and ankle not the knee so in that sense this all the uh, all the orthosis this is a mere small miniature one this is a large little bit larger one every orthosis that encompasses the foot and ankle foot and ankle not the knee but there are some specific characteristics so this is this is just uh, um, uh, crosses just the malleoli this causes far more above uh, there is no joint at all no joint at all here you may see uh, there is a joint here okay okay there is a, uh, not only that in this case there are some bar there is a connecting bar in front and in this case this same type of orthosis it is it, it is uh, these are these two orthoses are the same one and uh, this is from the side profile this is the front profile and there are some indentation over here indentation over there so uh, these are the difference between this what are the how do nomenclature it? i will come so basically what is orthosis what is orthotic definition orthosis is basically there it is a external appliances it is a external appliances when it is applied to the body to to cover up the lost functions or augment the deficient functions of the body so that is the orthosis it is the external appliances whereas the prosthesis is it is a it is the uh, uh, object which can be can be used outside the body or inside the body to replace the lost function that is the basic difference between the orthosis and the prosthesis now what is the orthotic orthotic basically orthotics it, it is basically the persons which produce the orthosis or manufacture the orthosis this is orthotic 
Now, orthotic prescription, how to prescribe, how to prescribe the orthosis? Now, always we have to take the history. They have to take the history, physical examination. Basically, we have to check the, the overall body component, control of the body. Because uh, if suppose there is a problem in the leg or the knee, but if the overall body control is not there, so it is very difficult to control the orthosis for the knee also or, or the leg also. So overall body function should be considered also. So not only centered over the leg or like that. Okay. Uh, so next one, the next will come to the limb. Next, the joint followed by the muscles. Next, the vessels and nerves, whether the vessels are patent or not, or the nerves are working or not. Next is a, if there is a pain, what is the source of the pain? Because we have to bypass, we have to bypass the source of the pain for relief of the pain with by the help of the orthosis. Next, for functional examination of the lower limb, we have to check the gait abnormality and the hip, knee, ankle, foot, the, the rhythm, and the, for the upper limb, hand, elbow, shoulder rhythm. So what is the basic requirements like the gait? All of you know, uh, all of you know, the, these are the basic requirements. The, the, this is, it, it is the uh, stance phase. Now it is a swing phase. Stance phase it starts with the heel strike, followed by the foot flat in the mid stance, followed by the heel up and the push up. Push up is basically, it is composed of two components. One is heel up, followed by the toe off. Okay. So basically this uh, four, five component is considered uh, as a, uh, as a uh, stance phase. Whereas swing phase is composed of three components is acceleration phase followed by the mid swing and the deceleration phase. Now, what are the uh, muscles which is required or functions of the required so joints? So in the stance phase joints, it is a plantar flexion as you can see here. So joint stance phase, plantar flexion and the dorsiflexion is required. Whereas during, see during this push up, metatarso, metatarso phalangeal joint at the uh, flexion is required, okay? So if these functions are not present or it is simply painful, one has to substitute that function. This is most important. Similar swing phase, dorsiflexion is required. If there is a dorsiflexion is not there, so there is a difficulty in ground clearance. So for the ankle, we require plantar flexures and the dorsiflexures. So what are the muscles required? Basic muscles required for locomotion is the plantar flexures of the ankle, dorsiflexures of the ankle, quadriceps is extremely important. See, in the mid stance, if the quadriceps is not there, the whole body, whole body weight is taken by the single limb. And that is only possible by locking of the knee and quadriceps function. So if the quadriceps, not only that, so there's another important muscle is gluteus maximus. So in the mid stance phase, so if the mid stance phase, so if, the, if these three muscles, the three muscles and three anti-gravity muscles are working, who are, what are those to maintain whole, to carry the whole of the body weight in a single limb. So this is the first one is the gastrosoleus that will maintain this plantigrade foot. Next one is the quadriceps that will make the knee extended as also quadriceps, uh, the, that is gluteus maximus that will maintain the hip extended because, because the, the body weight, our body weight from the head, sometimes from the tragus that will pass if it's considered in the lower limb, it will pass posterior to the hip joint. So there is a possibility of collapse and that collapse is prevented by the contraction of the gluteus maximus. So gluteus maximus, gluteus, uh, the quadriceps femoris and the gastrosoleus, these three muscles is required in the stance phase. And not only that, in the swing phase, most important is the dorsiflexures is required along with the little bit of flexion of the hip joint, flexures of the hip joint. But the flexures of the hip are not absolutely necessary because there are some other flexures also there. They can easily flex it. Like similarly, the, 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 even the, the external oblique muscles, they can also take into action for flexion of the uh, flexion of the lower limb. So uh, basically, these four muscles are required. gluteus maximus, quadriceps femoris, dorsiflexors of the ankle, and the plantar flexures of the ankle. Now the rocker action, this is also important. Three rockers are required during the locomotion. See, during this, uh, the walking, during this uh, stance phase, first one is the heel, heel strike. Heel strike, foot flat, mid stance, heel off and toe off. So these five stages I already described. So what are the rockers? First rocker is the heel. So rocker means uh, you can see the rocking horse. This is a very uh, good toy for the child, for young child, so rocking horse, they will ride over the uh, rocking horse and they just move in front and below and they simulate they are walking. So this is make a joy for that. This rocking horse action, the rocking action is, is very much important for our locomotion. 
and this first rocker is the heel. Next rocker is the midfoot rocker. As see, the whole body is coming forward. And last rocker is the metatarsophalangeal joint. That is the, the, at, the base, uh, that is, uh, at the base of the toes. So these three rockers is very, very important if during the locomotion. And these lo rocker actions, they should be incorporated in our uh, orthosis also. If, the, if there is a no joint, if there is no joint between this uh, leg component and the foot component, this rocker is action is required. Otherwise, locomotion will become very much hampered. How it can be restored, I will show in our uh, coming slides. Now, functional examination. Functional examination, they have to check the four P's. Get, get, get the abnormality, you have to check. And uh, if which, which joint, when place, next plane, that means which plane it is abnormal, in which phase, stance phase, swing phase, or both phase is abnormal, or property, that is the range of motion is increased, uh, that, that means unstable joint, or is a decreased, that means stiff joint. So place of the which joint is abnormal. Suppose this is the case. I have given the example. So this is the case. So which joint is, is abnormal? That means, see, this is a plantar flexion. So this is the ankle joint is involved. Now, uh, see, that was, suppose this is the swing phase. Okay. So, so, so if it is the ankle joint is involved, now the next question is which orthosis is required? Then that we have to choose that, that orthosis which crosses the ankle joint. That means at least ankle foot orthosis. So that is the answer. Next is the, the, if it is also the heel is also deviated inward. Heel is also, the summer's heel is appears to become deviated inward. So that means subtalar joint is also involved. That means it is a inverted. So in which plane it is abnormal? The ankle joint and subtalar joint, both are involved. In, involved. Next, in which joint? See, the ankle joint movement is occurring in the sagittal joint, sagittal plane, whereas the, the subtalar joint is inversion, inversion is occurring in the coronal plane. So if, if, it, if it is a sagittal abnormality or it is a coronal plane abnormality or it is a both plane abnormality. Suppose this, uh, this uh, figure is looking like both plane abnormality. So if it is a both plane abnormality, we have to choose one orthosis which will negate the movement of both the sagittal plane as also the coronal plane like this. This, this, this see this is the ankle foot orthosis where you see this is the anterior trim line. This anterior trim line is, 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 is forwarded in front of the malleoli. So if it is in front of the malleoli, that means whole of the subtalar joint is covered. So in that case, that will prevent this medial collapse, medial collapse of the subtalar joint. So if the subtalar joint is not involved, then we could do that. This anterior timeline should be below, should be behind the malleoli. So that there's some amount of inversion, inversion will become possible. But if the, this, if the foot is collapsing in the, in the, in the uh, middle, uh, in the uh, in the medially so in that case so we have to choose this one now in which plane if it is the in which phase is a stance phase or swing phase or both phase now they suppose this see this is in the swing phase now swing phase now the, the foot appears to be plantar flexed and heel is appears to become collapsed on the medial side that means valgus valgus heel okay so equino valgus deformity whereas see this is the stance phase in stance phase equinus is there but this see the valgus is corrected. So, so that means that there is only one plane abnormality is actually there. So this, this sort of heavy, heavy duty uh, orthosis is not required. We have to give the ankle foot orthosis with the anterior trim line below behind the malleola. So we have to because uh, inversion inversion is required to cope up the walking during uneven surface. We should not negate every movement. So that is how what is the uh, importance of uh, um, checking whether the deformity is in the stance phase or in the swing phase or in the both phase. If it is in the both phase, then this sort of orthosis will become sufficient enough. Otherwise, we will become below behind. Now, property. If the patient is unstable, that means range of motion will be increased. If it is a stiff, suppose see this is a equino, this is a stiff equino where equinus deformity. So this is range of motion is decreased. If the decrease in the stiff, so in that case, this sort of uh, uh, orthosis can be done, they can be used to fill up. The, the, we cannot correct it. So the, see, this is the this is the filling, this is a filler. So this this portion is filled up with some microcellular rubber. So it, this portion will be filled up with the microcellular rubber. So during white weight bearing, during the compression of the microcellular rubber, that will simulate some plantar flexion. So simulate some dorsiflexion. When it releases it, that will simulate some plantar flexion. Okay, and uh, and in that uh, in that sense, in this in this area below the uh, foot, we have to give some rocker action to simulate. 
the, the metatarsophalangeal joint movement. So the this is a the, the stiff joint. So the, the plane we have to check in which joint is abnormal, which plane is sagittal or coronal plane. If it's of which phase, is this in the stance phase or swing phase or both phase abnormal? Next are the range of motion, there's the increase, that means unstable joint, decrease at the stiff joint. So, so we see in this case, ideal orthosis should be like this. So, in that case, see, this is the is offspring uh, uh, is of orthosis, is a posterior uh, offspring orthosis, whereas in that case, so because of the very, very, very uh, malleability, there is a um, dorsiflexion is possible, but plantar flexion is not possible, will not become possible. And so as there is a correction, the, 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 there is a correction of the medial collapse in the stance phase, we should give this anterior trim line behind the malleolus. So the, this sort of or this sort of orthosis is suitable for the stiff joint, whereas in if it is an unstable joint where there is there is a only single plane abnormality, single phase abnormality, range of motion is is increased. That means increased plantar flexion. So this sort of uh, orthosis is required. So, okay. So this is one. And uh, if it is a both uh, both uh, if it is a that is not correctable, then it is a both plane. Then this sort of orthosis it can be used. Okay. Where it is a little bit of plantar flexion, uh, dorsiflexion is allowed, but plantar flexion will not become allowed. Okay. So the, this is the exercise. You can do that like this. The which joint, which phase. So in that case, if once you get the patient, we have to check in the same manner. If which joints are abnormal, in which plane it is abnormal, sagittal, coronal, or both plane, which phase, swing phase, uh, swing phase or stance phase or both phase, property, whether it is increased or decreased. Okay. Now the types. Now how to classify? This is uh, cl how to classify the orthosis. There are uh, three um, uh, structural classification or functional classification. Structural classification is the universal classification which is commonly accepted everywhere. So I will discuss what is universal classification. Otherwise there is a, uh, depending on the, uh, the types of um, uh, substances used for the uh, manufacturing, it may be classical, it is which is more made by the metallic aluminum type or the modern uh, orthosis, which is made up by the thermoplastic polymer polymer type. Another is the modular or non-modular type. The most uh, important is the universal type. I will come. Uh, what I will tell. What is the universal type? Now, functional is this in a static or the dynamic. Static means the orthosis which doesn't allow the movement of the joint, which is encompassed. So, if the ankle foot orthosis without joint, it is a static orthosis. But ankle foot orthosis with ankle joint, it's a dynamic orthosis. Or it's if it is ankle foot orthosis, it's a very malleable. Suppose I have, I have just I have shown it. So like this sort of orthosis that will allow some dorsiflexion. So that is a that is considered maybe a dynamic orthosis. But if it's a true dynamic orthosis, must have some joint in between the leg component and the foot component. Okay. So it may in that sense it may be static or the dynamic orthosis, postural or corrective orthosis. Some orthosis that can correct the deformity, some, some orthosis can, can maintain the, the function, they cannot correct the deformity. I will tell the function. Now, what is universal classification? This is a very, very important slide. So, and uh, that will make our uh, life very easy. Overall, overall the uh, world, this is considered the lower limb, upper limb and the spine. So, lower limb, that is a foot orthosis, foot orthosis, the, the orthosis which encompasses the foot, foot joints. So in that sense, every every day, every person uses some foot orthosis. What is this? That means either shoe or boot. Shoe or boot, basically it is a... So what is the difference between the shoe and the boot? So basically, in the upper, the upper border of the foot, uh, upper border of this foot orthosis, if it crosses the malleoli, then it is considered as a boot. Well, but if the upper border of the, uh, the orthosis, it remains below the malleoli, that is a shoe. So in that sense, the CTV, CTV, if it is a CTV orthosis, we have used is foot orthosis. What, what should be the orthosis? It be a shoe or boot? It should be ideally, it should be a boot because we want to cover the ankle joint because the deformity is in the ankle joint also. There is a uh, the CTV means that is a cave, cave deformity. There is a cavus, there is ankle equinus, there is a virus as also adductions. So ankle is also as it is involved. So we have to use this CTV boot. So we by loose, loosely we use this CTV shoe, but either, ideally it should be CTV boot. Okay. Next one is the, if it crosses the ankle, then it is known as the ankle foot orthosis. If it crosses only the knee, 
It is a knee orthosis. If it crosses the knee, ankle and foot, it is a kafo. That means a knee, ankle, foot orthosis. But if it crosses the hip joint also, it is a hip, knee, ankle, foot orthosis. And if it crosses the hip also, then it is a pelvic. There is lumbosaka, ALS. There is L-S-H-K-A-A-4. So that is the uh, universal classification. If you write this, everyone anywhere in, in the world, they can understand what do you want to mean. Similarly, in the upper limb, it may be finger orthosis, like the mallet finger orthosis. It is a finger orthosis. Hand orthosis. Okay, it may be considered only the hand. It may be wrist hand orthosis. Wrist hand, that means it encompasses the wrist also, wrist joint also. Because it may be shoulder orthosis. It may be elbow orthosis. It may be shoulder elbow orthosis. Or it may be shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand orthosis. So suppose there is an aeroplane sprint. Aeroplane sprint, basically, it is a shoulder, elbow, wrist, wrist and hand orthosis. Okay. So this is the, the, in this way, we have to classify this. Now, spine, suppose it is a collar. So it, if it, it encompasses only the cervical uh, joints, so it is a cervical orthosis. Suppose it, it is a somi brace. Somi brace or the, uh, it is a, uh, or, or is a four poster collar. That means so that it crosses some amount of some upper, upper uh, dorsal region also, or thoracic region. So it is a cervical thoracic orthosis. Lumbosacral orthosis. Lumbosacral, that means it, it crosses the, the, the lumbar and sacral uh, joints. Sacral orthosis. Sacral orthosis in that sense, we use the sacral orthosis daily day by day by using the belt, by the, just using the belt. But that belt should, belt, the, the, the thickness should be that breadth should be at least two inches, should be two inches. So to, to become orthosis. So it is a sacral orthosis, sacroiliac orthosis, uh, or it is a uh, dorsal uh, um, the dorsal lumbosacral orthosis, lumbosacral orthosis, or cervical dorsal lumbosacral orthosis. So the one in example is the Milwaukee brace. Milwaukee brace is basically it is a cervical dorsal lumbosacral orthosis. Now today we'll confine only the lower limb orthosis. This is the volume one lecture. In the in upper in the next day we will discuss on the upper limb and lastly the spine. So the, I think there are three lectures to be discussed. In the one lecture it will be very difficult to discuss everything. Now, type of the uh, type depend on the material. It may be conventional orthosis, the classical orthosis. And see, you can see this is the this is this is the ankle foot orthosis. Uh, these the components are basically the, this is the interface. Interface is basically this is the part which connects the orthosis with the body. So this is basically is the belt or this is the interface. Next, this is the aluminium bar, and see this is the boot. So as it crosses the malleolus, so this is a boot, and this is a joint also. Now this is joint. So this is a conventional ankle foot or classical ankle foot orthosis. This is an aluminum bar, this is a double bar. And this is the modern thermoplastic orthosis. This is a modern thermoplastic orthosis. See, this is a posterior leg component, leg shell actually. And this is the foot component. There is no joint at all. And this is a cup band. This is a cup band. So this is a classical thermoplastic modern orthosis. Now orthotic component. As I already told, it in classical, there's the interface component and the joints. And see, this is the joints. Now, what are the types of the joints? So if, if the ankle motions are normal, so you can give them free motions. That means that will allow dorsiflexion, plantar flexion also. Limited motions. Suppose it is a, it is a, it is a foot drop. So in that case, we can allow only the dorsiflexion. I mean, not the plantar fascia. So there is a limited motion. That means there is ankle, uh, there is um, the ankle joints with with foot drop stop, with foot drop stop, or we can use the assisted. That means with ankle motion with foot drop stop with assisted dorsiflexion. That is some dorsiflexion may be allowed. Okay, uh, lock. That means if the joint is, uh, we don't want to give any joint uh, motions. Suppose it is a very painful one, so we can we can use the joint, but that joint can be locked. So that means no motion or we can use the orthosis without any without any joints so so that in that sense it may be free motions joints limited motions joint lock joints assisted or resisted joint resisted motions and the next is the structural component is a structural component is basically the aluminum rods side rods these are the aluminum rods okay and lastly, the cosmetic component. If there is a cosmetic, if you require some some other uh, uh, cosmetic, maybe in, for the lower limb for the child, we can allow some uh, some specific color or like that. So interface, basically interface, structural components, joints, and lastly the boot might be there. So uh, that is the components of the orthotic in a classical one. 
Now modern, so modern is again in the interface. Suppose, so this is the interface, this is the leg component. See, this is the leg component and also the foot component. If there is a joint, see this is, there is no joint. This is a solid, there is no joint at all. But here it is a joint. So this is a articulated, articulated modern classical uh, orthosis thermoplastic, uh, de depending based on thermoplastic uh, material. This is articulated, but this is a non-articulated. Now accessories. As I have already told, there are three rocker. So in that case, uh, suppose this is the this, uh, this is the equinus deformity. So in that case, we have to use the orthosis with some filler. So this is, see, I have already told. So this is the orthosis where the filler is used. As you can see here, this filler is used. And on the, on the behind, in the lower part, this portion is covered by the microcellular rubber. So once the patient bears weight, that is compressed. So this compressed and that will simulate some dorsiflexion. And once he propagates forward, that uh, that uh, that that releases that releases the energy that will simulate the plantar flexion. So even without plantar flexion, dorsal flexion, that we can simulate that uh, action. And then now see the in front uh, the, the the front part of the soul. Front part of the soul is is a rocker soul. So rocker soul basically it, it's a, this apex. This apex should be this apex should be just behind the head of the metacarpal so that there will no movement occurring at the metacarpal joint still there this rocking because of the rocking action that will simulate the flexion at the, the, the metatarsophalangeal joint and that will help in locomotion so this sort of prosthesis and see this is the uh, the this is the filler and just behind this uh, four foot uh, area so if we allow this if we allow uh, if we add this rocking action it will be very very helpful even in a very very stiff uh, equinus uh, joint patient will be able to walk with least uh, energy so these are the accessories so accessories are the heel cushion which will simulate the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion and the rocker sole that will uh, simulate the toe of face so these are the accessories. So a modern uh, in modern orthosis, what are the components? This should be interface. There's a leg leg piece and the foot piece with or without joint. There's a, and trim line. Trim line. What is the importance of the trim line? I've already discussed. What is the inter so if we want to allow the movement of the subtalar joint, we have to give the trim line behind the malleoli. If we uh, if we don't want to allow the movement of the subtalar joint, trim line should be anterior to malleoli. Okay. Now the indications. Now this is a very very important slide we have to understand. So indications is basically there are four indications. One is a deformity. That means if it's a, if it is a flexible deformity, flexible deformity is due to weakness or the paralysis. So in that we are supposed to say the foot is plantar flexed. So it may be either equinus deformity or it is a plantar flexion. Uh, it is a foot drop. So sometimes it is asked in the examination. So, uh, so in attitude, the foot is plantar flexed. How to differentiate between a uh, it is a equinus deformity or it is a uh, it is a foot drop? The simple answer is we have to correct it passively. If it is a deformity, it cannot be corrected by active means or by the passive means. So it is a fixed deformity. So it is a equinus. But if it is a passively corrected, actively it is not corrected. But passively can be corrected. That means it is a flexible deformity. So basically, it, it is due to weakness or the paralysis. So a, that is the deformity. Uh, we can use these orthosis. Next is the weakness is the instability. It may be the upper motor neuron type of paralysis or the lower motor neuron type of paralysis. So and uh, remember that in lower motor neuron type of paralysis, that um, sometimes there may be some insensible skin may be insensible. So there is an additional some addition of some characters should be added with that. What is that add, that character? So not only we have to take care of the joints, but also we have to take care of the skin. That means we have to use the total contact sole, total contact sole for the insensible foot because so normally what happens in the normal foot, there is a, there is a basically force that is body weight is first comes in the, on, on the hill and from the hill, it comes on the lateral border and from the lateral border, it goes from the from the fifth the head of the fifth metatarsal to first metatarsal. So the, there is a point contact in the normal foot. The, the medial part of the foot is not uh, taking any weight. So that so, so that, that is the main problem. So if it is an insensible one, so we have to make a universal, the uniform distribution of force all over the of soul. So because stress is equal to force per unit area. So if the unit area is increased, so in that case, stress will be re reduced. 
So we have to. I will. I will discuss how the uh, the total contact soul can be prepared. So in we have to take care of. So we have to uh, in the lower motor neuron type. If it is a skin is insensible, we have to take the orthosis with total contact soul. This is very important. Next, next is the loss of structural integrity. It may be due to trauma. It may be joint disorder, inflammation, failed joint replacement. It's structural integrity. Suppose there is a pathological fracture or some infection that leads to segmental loss of the tibia. So even in, in that case, we can patient can, can be allowed to walk with the help of the orthosis. So this is a loss of structure. I will show you. And lastly, the pain. If it is a significant pain at any any part of the joint, so in any we can uh, we can uh, allow the patient to walk. Now unstable. Now how to what is the management of the unstable joint? So we have to check if the, if the joint is unstable. If it is, it may be unidirectional or it may be multidirectional. That means it may be only the sagittal plane deformity. It is only the dorsiflexures are paralyzed. So then that is the only the the foot drop. But if the dorsiflexures as also the everters are also paralyzed. So there will be equinoverous deformity. Okay. So that is not only plantar flex, but also he will go into various condition. So there is a multidirectional deformity. So it, if it is a unidirectional deformity, there are several options like the tendon transfer, osteotomy, bone block, you know, to say everything. But if there is a no option is available, then only uh, option is available is the orthotic stabilization. Whereas in the multidirectional instability, you have to check whether the patient is a skeletal immature or the mature. In skeletally immature, we have this only option is available is the orthotic stabilization till the patient becomes skeletally mature. Once this patient is skeletally mature, the another option is coming, that is the orthodesis. Orthodesis, because if in orthodesis, patient can, patient can lift the orthotic stabilization. Otherwise, patient have to use lifelong orthosis. orthosis. That is a very cumbersome. Okay, so in uh, adult, so if we change uh, the, the unstable joint to a stable joint by orthodesis, that is painless stable joint, patient can, uh, patient can, it doesn't need to use the orthosis for lifelong. So that is a very extremely uh, good situation. So we have to do the orthodesis. But if the patient is not uh, able to do the orthodesis or is not agreed to do the orthodesis, then only one or uh, the uh, option is available, that is the orthotic stabilization. Now the lower limb or the weakness in the ankle. So it may be absent dorsiflexures, there is a foot slap or foot drop, or absence plantar flexures, or absence subtalar motions. So what are the options? Options is basically it's the conventional ankle foot orthosis, this is a double iron, cup band, boot, no ankle joint. Because this, you see, if, there's a, if there is ankle joint is ab ab abnormal, so we don't want to give the movement of the ankle joint. It's the increased mobility. So we have to negate the ankle. So we have to know no ankle joint, boot without ankle joint. But we can give the heel cushion and the rocker sole. What the purpose of the heel cushion I've already discussed. Otherwise, we have to give the FRO or the articulated FRO or the ankle foot orthosis without, without ankle joint. See, okay. But an anterior trim line should be anterior to medial or posterior to medial depending on the subtalar motions. If the subtalar motions are absent, then we can give to anterior to medial. If the subtalar motions are normal, then we can give to the anterior trim line posterior to medial. Again, the heel cushion and rocker sole can be added. So this is the ankle foot orthosis. As you can see, the classical, as we can already discuss, double iron, cup band. Now we can tell easily how to nomenclature it, how, what are the parts of the orthosis, what are the utility of the orthosis, now what are the indications of the orthosis, what are the limitations of the orthosis. Now the limitations, ankle foot orthosis, this is a classical orthosis, limitations are, this is heavy, this is very, very heavy and it is cosmetically un unacceptable. See, it is a cosmetical patient is uh, socially maybe very much ashamed of using this. That is why it, is, it has come, there is the classical orthosis. See, even with a, a patient, they, they, no, nobody can notice it. So even uh, that can be inserted under the shoe, under the shoe or boot, okay? And that can be covered by the trouser. So it is cosmetically, it is highly acceptable. So this is the advantage of this uh, modern uh, classical orthosis. And now this is a non-articulated part. If you want to give some motion of the ankle joint, then you can give the articulated component. Okay. Now, muscle weakness around the knee. Now, uh, either knee, in this, uh, I already told quadriceps is required uh, for locking, for extension of the knee during the stance phase. So, if the quadriceps is weak, so what will happen? The knee is buckled during the mid stance phase. Okay. 
So what will uh, what would be the ideal orthosis in that case? So we have to give the knee orthosis or the CAFO, that is a knee ankle foot orthosis. Okay. Or so that means we have to use this orthosis. So see, this is knee is buckled. So in that case, so we have to give the knee ankle foot orthosis. But but if you use some orthosis which maintain the 15 to 20 degree plantar flexion of the ankle joint, so what will happen? So in that case, so there, if the if this orthosis maintains 15 degree plantar flexion, so once the patient gives the first first step of the uh, of the orthosis is is that heel it is instead of the heel contact is a toe contact toe con toe will contact first no without heel so the toe will come first so if the toe contact occurs first so that will the whole of the body weight you see the center of the gravity that will come in front of the knee joint and directly go, goes towards the ground and depending on the third law of the newton so the, it is a, the opposite ground reaction you will go above it above it so if, if there's orthosis over there so through the orthosis that uh, ground reaction force going above in front of the ankle in front of the knee and if there's some anterior bar they push the anterior bar behind to keep the knee joint extended so that is the principles of the fro that is floor reaction orthosis and this alignment which provides the stability it is known as the alignment stability this plantar flexion that allows the the, um, the passive locking of the knee joint. So that is the alignment stability. So even without quadriceps, patient can lock the knee joint because of this alignment. So that is the basically this is the, uh, the this is the known as this uh, this is the uh, uh, the anchor this FRO. There's a flare flow reaction orthosis. This is a, what are the parts? This is the leg piece. This is the foot piece. There is no joint at all. See, there is no joint. And this junction, it is it is added. Foot is added. Foot portion is added along with the leg piece. It is a 15 degree plantar flexion. 15 degree plantar flexion. And there is an anterior breach. Anterior breach. So, once the flute, when the flow reaction comes above it, along the side, side bar, and that will push, that will push the, the leg behind. So, so that the knee it becomes passively locked. That is the basis of the uh, this ankle foot, uh, this FRO. So this is the Belloni orthosis. So in, so instead of if you use the classical orthosis, you have to give the CAFO. So this you have to go above the knee. But if in this case, as it is a quadriceps paralysis, so by the Belloni orthosis, we can easily manage to work. It, uh, it help the patient to work. So this is the uh, in, uh, importance of the FRO. Now see, this is the, the these are the different types of FRO. Then this is the ankle foot orthosis. So basically, what is the and importance of the anterior trim line? This is uh, I've already discussed. So it is a posterior shell, cup band, anterior trim line, articulated or not? We have to check. So this is the non-articulated. This is articulated. We have to check in the in, in the inside it and, and and the lower part. We have to whether the heel cushion is present or not, or rocker sole is present or not. So they are, what everything has become explained. Okay, so th these are the uh, um, examples. Suppose these are the patients. So you can see which plane it is. Anybody, anybody can join this to interact. Anybody can join this. Okay, I will come. I have just finished it. I have to come again. Now this is the kafu. This is the conventional kafu. This is a knee, ankle, foot orthosis. See, this is the thigh band. This is a thigh corset or thigh band. Okay. And this is this is the this is the knee joint. This is the knee joint. The, the knee joint. There are three types of knee joint. One is the ring lock, bar lock, and the posterior offset. So knee ring lock is see this is the lock, a ring lock. The ring lock is the same type of lock. Once once it is taken above, it is it is flexed. Once it once it is released, it is automatically goes behind. It is goes down to lock it. Okay. So it has to become it is to become dislodged again and again and again so it can be it can be manu it can be manually uh, that, uh, you, have, you have to you, you have to use this manually so that is the main problem so ring lock uh, type of uh, lock should be used for the child which which can be taught but for the older patients it is very difficult to uh, learn so ring lock orthosis uh, ring, lock, ring lock knee joint cannot be used for the older patients 
so for the older patient is the posterior posterior offset posterior offset means there is a there is a, a specific uh, mechanism which can automatically flex it but during the extension it locks automatically so it can allow the flexion when the patient tries to sit so this is automatically flexes but oh, once it begins so that it yeah. cannot it cannot uh, it cannot allow the hyper extension it flexes it, but it cannot allow the hyper extension. This is known as posterior offset. So for the older age, posterior yeah, offset uh, knee joint is used. For the child, ring lock is used. Yeah. Another is the bar lock. For the bar lock is this uh, this ring can be um, manually uh, should be taken out. Uh, for the uh, for the child for the uh, female, it is very difficult to to uh, take over the sharp she's uh, frocks to remove that. So it is there is a one. Rope is tied over this. Rope is tied over this. So the, if the rope is tied over this lock, so from the west region, they, if they if they pull that rope, automatically it becomes unlocked. So that is a bar lock actually. So this is the knee joint. There are three types of knee joint. Again, these are the bars or this are for the leg, and this is the cup band. Cup band and the boot may be allowed. Boot, boot or the ankle boot. Classical ankle boot orthosis here. It is shown here. This is it is uh, it is used. Now for the this is a thigh corset is it is seen now either thigh corset we have to check the upper lip in the upper part of the thigh corset if it is a it is a flat one that means there is an arrangement for sitting this arrangement for sitting that means uh, if it is a this is, if it is a flat one that means there is arrangement for sitting so this is a wet bearing orthosis it is a wet bearing that means there is a wet there is actually wet it relieves the wet okay so body wet body weight comes over there and from the body weight is it, it uh, thigh corset from the sidebars it goes directly to the grounds okay so this is a ischial weight bearing caliper okay but if this mechanism is not there that means it's a, it is not a weight bearing okay so you have to check the upper part of the thigh corset see this is the you see that this part of this thigh corset doesn't have this sort of an arrangement so this is not a weight bearing caliper Okay, but this is a ischial weight bearing caliper. Ischial means if it bears which part of the body? Ischial tuberosity. Actually, the God has given three areas of the lower limb to bear the weight. One is the heel. That is why the skin under the heel is very tough. Another is the ischial, ischial tuberosity. That is why the, uh, you can examine the skin under the ischial tuberosity is very tough. Okay, another area is just behind the, the patella. So, that area, these three areas, these three areas is very uh, tough and that can be suitable for the weight bearing. So, ischial weight bearing caliper, we have to check the upper part of the thigh corset. Whether it is an arrangement of the sitting, there is ischial weight bearing. Otherwise, there is a not weight bearing. So, uh, absent knee extensor, so this is, a, it is a, see, this is in the cuffo. It is a absent knee extensor in the both sides. So, it is a cuffo. If it is unilateral um, quadriceps paralysis, we can use the FRO. But if it is a bilateral uh, quadriceps paralysis, we cannot use the FRO. FRO on the both sides cannot be used. So in that case, conventional uh, orthosis, that is a CAFO should be used. That is the limitation of the FRO. If it is a bilateral one, so we cannot use the FRO on the both the sides. So in that case, we have to use the uh, CAFO. And see, this is the FRO. You can see here. So this is the sidebar, this is the foot component, leg component, this is the anterior bridging, this is the cup band, okay? And see, this is junction between the leg and the foot is 15 degree plantar flexed, okay? Now the uh, UMN lesions, it may be equinus, it may be equinoferous, or it may be in that on the knee, maybe genu recovertum, and then can use the similarly same thing, that is ankle foot orthosis with the anterior trim line, it may be anterior to malleoli or the posterior malleoli, but as it is a neurogenic uh, weakness, so we should not give some joint. So it is a non-articulated type of ankle foot orthosis. So, so, so this would be the non-articulated, I already told. In otherwise, it is another name is the solid ankle foot orthosis. That means SAFO. So, well, the, so beware of using these mnemonics. So it is the CAFO, it is a knee ankle foot orthosis. This is a SAFO, that means SAFO, that is solid ankle foot orthosis. Basically, it is a below knee orthosis, solid ankle foot orthosis, as there is a no ankle joint. Now, if it's a structural deficit, if there is a st structural deficit, that, that means a, we don't want to allow 
any part of the, the, the this leg or the knee we don't to allow the to bear the weight on this uh, deficient structural structurally deficient area so in that case what will you do we have to use the orthosis which can bear the weight from the body weight to its uh, to its interface and directly transmit the body weight towards the ground that is why the importance of the ischial weight bearing kafo i have already showed ischial weight bearing kafo so basically that will transmit the body weight from the ischial uh, ischial tuberosity to the ground so if there is any any part is deficient suppose there is a non uneven distal part of the femur there is a non uneven segmental bone loss in in the tibia so instead of that patient will be able to walk so that is a ischial weight bearing kafo can be used indication is the structurally deficiency Another is the, the, the suppose it, the, if it is a lower part of the tibia is deficient or the ankle is deficient. So in that case, we have to use the post uh, the PTB that is a posterior uh, PTB bivalve ankle foot orthosis or patellar tendon bearing orthosis. Patellar tendon bearing ankle foot orthosis. What is that? Say patellar tendon bearing or see this is the this is a bivalve. This is a posterior one. This is a posterior leg component and the and the foot component and is the anterior leg component. And this see the anterior leg component, it is a little bit molded against the patellar tendon as also the tibial condyle, tibial condyle. The same manner like the PTB plaster, posterior, that is the patellar tendon bearing plaster. Same thing. So during its, uh, it is uh, preparation, the anterior valve, anterior valve is molded along the along the, 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 the how it can be manufactured. It is can be it should be manufactured by the help of the plaster of Paris. So plaster of Paris uh, uh, replica is first is made by placing the plaster of Paris over the affected area of the body to take the exact uh, body uh, counterpart and depending on that the exact polypropylene polymer is prepared so that so how it happens how it uh, so, so, so this uh, this sort of this anterior uh, the anterior shell and the posterior shell and this is covered with some uh, some uh, strap. So basically, because of this uh, this uh, this uh, indentation, so what happens? Whole the it is basically it, it is it is allowed to fifteen degree flexion of the knee joint. Once there is fifteen degree flexion, the whole of the patella and the femoral condyles and tibial condyles will come in contact with this component, with the upper part of this anterior component that will bear the weight. That is why I have told nature has given the three areas of the upper lower limb to bear the weight. One is the sole, sole of the foot, the sole is thick, that is the ischial tuberosity, so that is the skin of the under ischial tuberosity is thick, and also just under the patella, under the patella around the ligament of patella, the skin is very thick, it, you can, everybody can check by themselves. So, so once it is 15 degree flexion during walking, the whole of the lower limb weight is borne by this indentation which is given in the anterior flap. And the, and that body weight is coming by the side of that body side of this uh, of this uh, orthosis directly to the ground. So this is a simple. There is a PTB ankle foot orthosis. Otherwise, it should be ischial weight bearing cuff. I have already showed what is ischial weight bearing cuff. And in that case, the body weight is directly transmitted from this area from this area to directly to the ground. Okay. So see, this is the case. This is a real case. It is my case. I have shown this. See, this is the, 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 the several operations. Almost seven, eight operations was done. Even Elizarov was attempted, but because of the severe skin condition, there is a at the almost at the verge of amputation. But ultimately, somehow it is uh, it is uh, protected. Now uh, uh, it is uh, it is uh, uh, now it is applied the kafo without knee joint. So what is the orthosis of choice? It should be kafo without knee joint and ankle joint or thyroplastic AFO without ankle joint anterior trim line posterior to medial malleable. So see this is oh. this, this type of orthosis uh, I have prescribed. Now patient can stand and even walk with this. And we have given the joint in the joint and this is basically is the posterior offset knee joint so that there is automatic flexion is available. So in the patient, the patient wants to sit, if there is a patient can sit with wide flexion, but uh, there is a uh, during the extension, it cannot allow the hyper extension. Okay. So say this, uh, this is the exact uh, orthosis. This is the, th what are the parts? This is the thigh corset. This is the knee joint. This is the posterior offset knee joint. This is the thanoplastic ankle foot uh, component. And this is the aluminium bar. Okay. And these are the different straps, the foot straps, ankle straps, there's a leg straps and the thigh straps. 
okay and see there is no no seating arrangement so it doesn't require seating okay so that is why patient can uh, patient can stand it doesn't require seating patient can wait we are wait as the as the fibula is united so that is how that is that there is a nature has given some always keep some uh, avenues open and that that is allows some weight bearing so that it, it which scale weight bearing uh, is not required still it is little bit uh, uh, some uh, indentation was done so if the patient wants to uh, keep some body weight temporarily they can do that but the, it doesn't require significant uh, weight uh, sitting arrangement during walking now, if, as there is a, a SAFO, that means a solid ankle foot orthosis, there must be some DAFO, that means dynamic ankle foot orthosis. So, see, this is the, this is a very, very malleable. See, it, it is a, also polymer, but it is a so slender one. So, the, so, this is a posterior offspring type of variety. So, so that the, is very easily, that can be, dorsiflexion can be easily allowed, but plantar flexion cannot be allowed. So, in that sense, it is a dynamic ankle foot orthosis or DAFO. Okay. And then, see, this is the ankle joint is there. It allows dorsiflexion, but uh, ankle uh, plantar flexion is not allowed. Now, this UCBL, this is a this this is a, a, a what is that? Sometimes it is used is University of the California Biomechanics Laboratory. Uh, so there is a rigid plastic total contact design. So if it is a, a painful hind foot or the uh, suppose is a uh, calcaneum fracture or calcaneum osteomyelitis, patient is complaining of severe pain during walking. This sort of uh, um, uh, orthosis can be used along with the foot lease. Okay. Now the deformity, deformity. So foot orthosis and deform. How do you say so, there's abnormal foot contact? So in uh, in instead of heel of heel heel, first contact is coming onto the this toe. So initial foot contact is is abnormal. So we have to build up the heel. Okay. Next is the plantar pressure distribution. So there is a very extremely fine contact. So you have to how to pressure contact? There is a total contact. Soul is the molded total contact soul is required. So again, the plaster, plaster is used to take its exact, uh, exact uh, footprint uh, on the plaster, and over on that, uh, depending on that, we have to prepare that exact uh, total contact molded total contact soul. And as the limited ankle joint motion, we have to add the heel cushion as also the rocker soul. Heel cushion. What is the function of heel cushion? I already described. That will simulate the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion and the rocker sole that will simulate the uh, toe off. So that's it's a bit, that, that is how it is prepared. The build up heel is a uh, heel is built up and uh, at the under the heel, this microcellular rubber is added for simulation of the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And along with that, the rocker action is added. Uh, so in this way, they can easily use this. And see, uh, even if there is a if the coronal plane deformity, that can also be taken care of uh, by its total contact. So see, in this total contact, as the pressure is universally distributed, so there is no pressure uh, point. Now, the insensible, this is the last point uh, we'll discuss today. The insensible foot, I already told, so we have to distribute the pressure evenly in all parts of the soul. So that, how can it be done? Then again, the plaster uh, 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 replica should be prepared uh, so that the by exact footprint is taken on the plaster and depending on that footprint, the, the total contact molded sole is prepared. And under that is another important is a sole stiffener is used. Sole stiffener, that is what is the function of the sole stiffener on the outside of the foot. That because of the sole stiffener, so the no external pressure is transmitted from the external to internal pressure because uh, so, uh, skin is insensible. So if there is some uh, pressure is coming from the outside, there is a possibility of ulcer. So soul, so this uh, one is a total contact molded soul, and that is this soul stiffener that should be added on that. So in the insensible foot, what are the uh, characteristics of the boot? It should be tough outer covering. Purpose is the same. That is no external pressure will be transmitted to the foot. Extra depth shoe because there should be no external. Uh, we don't want to become compressed the foot or toes. And any and, and parts of the foot. Sole stiffener, what is the function? Again, it is already discussed. Total contact molded sole to distribute the pressure evenly in all parts of the sole, all parts of the skin, because to reduce the stress, as stress is described by this, the, the, the force per unit area. First, uh, so uh, and next is the cushioned heel rocker insole function is already described, and, and the, there must be some uh, some vent so so that the foot becomes dry, hygienic, and well ventilated. So in this manner, so we have to for lepra foot. So this sort of uh, open open to uh, chapel or this sort of foot can be used. I think we'll uh, stop here.
and we can have your questions we can uh, take this okay over to yes, yeah thank you very much sir it was great uh, almost uh, most of the thing has covered sir it, uh, uh, as though there is the first thing which uh, most uh, few of the students even about the prosthetic and orthotics difference they are getting confused during the examination so how to uh, yes. remember those things are intense situation and uh, uh, the few things uh, about the prosthetic like madras foot sack foot and all uh, we'll discuss, we'll discuss it. There is a prosthesis. I think there is a vast subject. So I will mm -hmm. go slower, slower. So this is the first I have to discuss the um, lower limb orthosis. Next yes, we will yes. uh, discuss the upper limb and the spine. And lastly the prosthesis. Prosthesis yes. we will discuss in a separate way. There, there are lots of points to be discussed. We will uh, yes. go in uh, serially. Depending on the orthosis, is there any question we will discuss. Okay, sir. So, uh... One thing uh, which is, I think, on every alternate day, they used to ask about the FRO. You have explained quite well, sir, about that one. But if it is for 10 marks, so what else to be written in the... Yes. First of, all, uh, first of all, how to differentiate the FRO from the ankle foot orthosis? Yes. First, only one point. This is a, there may be 10, 15 degree plantar flexion. There is yes. one. Second one, there is anterior bar, anterior connecting bar. These two are asset that they have to differentiate this ankle foot orthosis from the FFRO. That is first. Second, how it what is the principles? Principle is the alignment instability and alignment stability. How it what is the alignment? How to provide the stability? That is the 15 degree plantar flexion. That is why if there is a quadriceps paralysis, if there is a nature produces the ankle uh, that is equinus. So ankle equinus should not be corrected in presence of quadriceps weakness. So that is a that is welcome deformity, welcome deformity. So ankle equinus that is a protective for quadriceps paralysis. So that so this the, this equinus that we have deliberately keeping the foot plantar flex so that we can use the ground reaction force to pass in front of the ankle and in front of the knee joint. Next, next, uh, next is what is the uh, limitation of these FRO? Limitation of the FRO is, if it is a bilateral quadriceps weakness, you cannot use the FRO. That is one. Second, if there is already genuine recurvatum deformity, so we cannot use the FRO. This is the limitation. Very thank you for your good question. If it is already genuine recurvatum deformity, as the, 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 uh, the ground reaction force is coming in front to keep the joint extended, this is already hyperextended. So it cannot use that. So in that case, we have to use some additional uh, upright behind the knee joint, additional upright. That is a modification of the FRO where there is additional upright is used um, behind the knee joint to prevent the, uh, the genuine recovery. Okay. So that is the one uh, most important. Otherwise, we have to give the conventional cap four. So that is a limitation of the FRO. And if it is a bilateral quadriceps weakness, we cannot use the FR on both the sides. In that case, we have to uh, either we have to operate it, uh, operate one side and uh, use the FR on the other side, or operate both the sides, or use the conventional kafu. That is a, a knee ankle foot orthosis. So, uh, other things, sir. Okay. Uh, few of the uh, prosthetic and orthotics are not in use, but usually kept for the examination. Or something like mermaid, mermaid splint, these are yes. less used. So, those things. Mermaid splint, yes. Yeah. Basically, it is a knee orthosis. It encompasses only the knee joint. There is a single bar, there is a median bar, and there are some uh, straps, thigh straps, and the leg straps. So, if it is a genu velgum deformity, so in that case, a genu velgum deformity, there is a function of three point contact. Three point contact. So this uh, in the genuine valgum deformity, the leg. Uh, once we tie the leg, leg strap and the thigh, uh, and the thigh strap, that will keep the both the legs in uh, apart in the in the aligned. So that will maintain the alignment, but that will not allow the movement. So that as the patient is not allowed to move, it is usually discarded. Is not uh, used. Uh, its compliance is very poor with the marmot. So that is why it is not uh, used nowadays. So for the genu or genu deformity, we can use the knee orthosis with the bar, with a, with a metal bar. Metal bar should be on the deformed side. 
so if it is a genuine valgum deformity we have to give the bar on the outer outer side outer side and inner strap if it is a genuine velum deformity so remember that your you, you should be very strong on the weaker side so if it, it, that means the go, go, the, in the deformed side you have to give the strong side strong bar so if it is a genuine valgum deformity as the leg is going outside we have to give the bar on the outer outer aspect okay and the uh, we have to give strap on the inner side if it is a genuverum deformity, that is the leg is going in inwards, so to give a strong bar, that is aluminum bar, on the inner side, and it gives, if I strap on the other side, at the same time you have to give some a knee joint, because the knee, that is a, so there is a hinge or a dynamic knee orthosis with a knee joint and the, the thigh strap and the leg strap, so that is the ideal one, and depending on the deformity, the the bar should be on the outer side or the inner side. Sir, I'll request you for. Uh, those uh, those few splints which is not in use to keep the photograph or something for the next class, sir, so that okay, I'll, I'll, they I'll can show you, easily I'll show identify. Sir. I'll show. You. Okay. Oh yes, sir. So uh, one term was temporary and permanent prosthetics. So uh, what are those and what are the examples of them? Okay, the actually the, there is no such uh, this is temporary or permanent patient actually ideally the, the depending on the functional status. If that uh, if suppose I have shown a one orthosis, there is ankle foot orthosis. Uh, the patient has a uh, patient has a, 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 a stiff ankle equinus, and there is a little bit of movement is there because for, after following several operations was done. The, the, now the patient has a malignated tibia, malignated tibia fracture with some uh, restricted ankle motions with some skin flaps are over there okay patient is allowed to walk with the help of this solid ankle foot orthosis without ankle joint where the, the anterior trim line is anterior to malleoli but uh, i have already discussed already advised the patient to do the operation because there is a malunion so we can correct the malunion but because of the severe soft tissue soft tissue uh, compromise all around the joint patient is not the patient is very much afraid that uh, the way that the, the, because there's a high chance of uh, skin slab, multiple operations, even the amputation during this process of correction. So in the patient is very happy to use this orthosis during walking. So in that case, that is this permanent orthosis. Otherwise, that uh, if it can easily be correctable, so that can be temporary. So there's no there's a relative term whether it's a permanent or uh, temporary orthosis. If it is operable, we have to correct it by surgically. That is okay. But if it is uh, same thing has happened in the unstable joint also. If it's unstable joint, we have to operable, then we have to do the arthrodesis. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, Yes, sir. I think uh, the interconnection, hello, internet hello. connection was little yes, weak. Yes, it was disconnected. Yeah, we have lost you in between. Okay. Just yeah. I think. Uh, is there any other questions? Yeah. 
So, Any other questions? Uh, just one last question, sir. Uh, what are the organization? Yes, yes. Uh, is it important for the ex examinee to know that what are the organization which is taking care of orthotics and prosthetics? Or no, no, no. It's not required. It's, it's not, not required. required. Okay, so, so it is not important. Yes. It is not required. Or uh, yeah. uh, ideally, I just I, I am summing up uh, the my classes. Yeah. Once uh, it can be given in two form for the DNB students, it may come it in, in your OSCE system, or in uh, MS Ortho that it can come. So what are the what, tell the name of the orthosis, tell the different parts of the orthosis or the functions of the orthosis. Next, uh, what are the indications? What are the contraindications or limitations? How it can be improved? So it is now it I have already described in this in case of FRO. Uh, so in this way we have to answer this. So in uh, DNB, I have I will give the answer on my uh, the questions I have given. Uh, in the uh, it is related with the upper limb orthosis. I will uh, I'll give my answer in the next class. Okay. So in D DNB, the, we have to know how to prescribe the orthosis. Some it is it, it is sometimes it is asked in your uh, uh, in a long case or short case. Suppose it is a it is a, a claw hand deformity. So in that case, of which, which sort of orthosis you have to use? It, it can be all, everything should be asked in your um, cross examination. Okay. So yes. in this way, we have to describe. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Any other great, question? Sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, I think uh, we'll not have more questions from the attendees. So we can conclude the session today. And for yes. the upper limb prosthetics, we can plan as soon as you are available. Yes, definitely, definitely. Definitely. Thank I you very much, sir. It was great, Thank sir. Thank you. Bye. Sir. Bye, sir. That is, I understand. Got it. Different type of orthosis. Most probably, we I told you I saw an dynamic pop up display in the course. Napoli Marcus and this next Okay, this class is uh, uh, this is you're good for the Okay. I'll give uh, so your next class for the Patapalim and also the spine. So you are lucky. Thank you. 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 Thank you